I made a video a little while back where I spent 100 days collecting crap in Skyrim. It got a bunch of views and everyone seemed to want a part two. So I'm back, and not just for the views, I promise. I did genuinely have a bunch of fun in that first video, and Loki wanted it to do well so that I had a reason to do another one. There was a lot of things collected in the first 100 days, like these masks and dragon claws. Even got every single Daedric artifact in the game. The first thing on my list of crap I want to collect in today's video is the final four Dragon Priest masks you can get from the Dragonborn DLC. And to get started with that, we have to head on over to Windhelm. I don't want to go into Windhelm, we have to go around the side to these boats. I had to threaten this guy to take me to Solstheim on his ship. And here we are, the island of Solstheim. So I want to collect a bunch of stuff from this place in today's video. There is four dragon priest masks to collect, as well as four words of power and a bunch of other unique items. Now there is some weird things going on on the island, but before we get to any of that, I'm gonna go to the right and leave Raven Rock right away to talk to this guy. To get one of the dragon's priest masks, Asks, we have to go through his quest line, and it's a bit of a long one, so I wanted to get it started right away. He wants an investment of 1,000 septim so that he can hire some miners and dig out the area. So I give him the coin, and now I'm gonna head back to Raven Rock. Well, kinda, not really. We're walking right past the Raven Rock to go up this mountain to get the first Dragon's Priest mask. There is the ruins we have to go to. Gonna head on inside. Ah, uh, there's some dead people inside. That's not good. I did find these geos. I could mine them and get rubies from them. I've been keeping all of the rubies and diamonds and just all of the precious gems that I've been finding, so I'm gonna dig these up. I'm not gonna show you me collecting every single ruby or every single book either. The video is gonna be insanely long. Just assume that I picked up all that I could find. This looks like somewhere I would stuff a dragon priest. Got close, and yep, yeah, there it is. Gonna take a bunch of swings at the sucker, and down he goes. One out of four masks down. I love how these things look. I did take the word of power from the wall also. Like I said, I would like to collect all of these. That's something I'm not really gonna have to try to do though. We will just like naturally go to those areas while collecting a bunch of other things. Oh, and I found a black book as well. These things are interesting and I'll talk more about these later, but for now I'm gonna take this book. We do get taken into the book itself and given a quest to complete the book. Okay, but I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm just gonna to fail the quest and we'll do that later. I just wanted to take the book with me while I'm here. Now we have some business in Raven Rock itself. I had a chat with this blacksmith called Glover Mallory who talked about how someone has his pickaxe and he wants it back. So I went into the mines and talked to Crashus who has it. He talked to me about wanting help uncovering a secret the mines hold that could put Raven Rock back on the map. And I do say I will help him, but also tell him I need that pickaxe back. He handed it over, and I returned it to Glover Mallory, who said I could keep the pickaxe. Yeah, he didn't really need it back, he was more just trying to teach Crashus a lesson. Now, I thought this was a unique item, for some reason, at the time of recording. I don't know why I thought that. Uh, I do find one later, and I figure out that it's not a unique item, but still cool. You need one of these pickaxes to mine an ore on the island called Stalrum, and I will be doing some of that later, but for now we are going back into the mines to head on down because you can get another one of the four masks right here in Raven Rock in this mine. You can actually get another unique weapon in this room as well. We get this two-handed greatsword. It's called the Blood Skull Blade and we can use it to unlock this door. We have to do both vertical and horizontal attacks to have the energy blasts match up with the lines on the wall. And then the door will open up and allow us to pass on through. I made it to the room where the dragon priest is hanging out, and if we go over here, you will come out of the water. And I have a really awkward fight over that water. But down he goes, and there is the second dragon priest mask. I did also get the word of power on the wall behind him. Oh, and there's another black book. I'm gonna take that too. I returned back to Raven Rock to talk to Crashus. And at some point, I had picked up a journal. Don't ask me where the heck I got it from. And I gave it to him. He seemed 
seems happy, but I just wanted the mask. Two down and two to go. We are halfway through collecting all of these masks, for those of you that suck at math. The two masks that are left are a little bit harder to get. One of them is to do with that investing quest that we've already started. And the second, we actually have to kill Mirak. We are getting into the main storyline of this place now. There's some weird things happening on the island, and something seems to have a hold over the people. I, at some point in the last video, got attacked by cultists already. And those cultists were talking about how Mirak will return. I met with this dark elf not too far from Raven Rock, who says that Mirak's been gone for a long, long time, and that's impossible. Now, he actually has a temple on this island somewhere. And we're gonna go and investigate. Now, there's a lot of people here that are under a trance and are being forced to work on it. But I did meet this lady called Freya. She came to avenge her people who are under some kind of spell, like I mentioned. And we teamed up to explore the temple to find out what's going on. I came across my third black book. This one will drag us in and take us straight to a surprised Mirak. His spidey senses were tingling and he knew I was Dragonborn too. He says it's only a matter of time before Solstheim is his and that I can go wait for his arrival with the rest of Tamriel. And then he got his friends to send me back. It's fine, I'll kick his ass later. Now Freya wants us to go to her village to tell her father what we discovered. Ran from the cave we came out of over to this village. Told him about Mirak and he said it was how he feared that Mirak was never truly gone and now has returned. I need to find a word of power called Bend Will so we can use it to free the people here from Mirak's grasp. I went over to get it and it was being guarded by a weird looking dragon. I say weird like it's not one of my favorite dragons in the game. I cast Dragon Ren to cripple him and took a few swings. He hurts pretty bent, kept from dying by chugging potions. Eventually got enough hits in to take him out and that jerk Mirak stole the soul before I could take it. Like I said, he's dragonborn too and he can consume dragon souls just like me. Actually, I believe he's the first ever dragonborn. There is the word the dragon was hanging out at. Now, this is Bend Will and if we take that back to one of these stones, we can cast it to reveal a lurker and then if we kill it, we free the people in the area of the spell they're under. After that, I return to Freya's village to talk to Storm. The ungrateful sod wants me to cleanse more of these stones. He told me I should talk to Neloth about the black books. Neloth is the dark elf that we met earlier by one of the other stones. I want to work on changing my loadout a little bit. Since we're here on Solstheim, it might be fun to dress the part and get some stallrim gear. Now, this guy in Freya's village sells stallrim, but it's not gonna be enough. So I left Skull Village to head to Raven Rock, and then I went right back to Skull Village. Now that blacksmith that sells Storm is now missing, and we need to find out what happened to him. Spoilers, to cut right to the chase, these Thalmor kidnapped him. So I'm gonna murder them and check he is all good. Yeah, they have a map to a big source of Storm now. I found the Thalmor and started blasting. Always a good time killing these guys. Not so fun when they turn it around on you. Yep, yeah, I'm as dead as they come. Let's try that again. This time I talked this guy into letting me speak to his leader. And I used my orcs once a day berserker rage racial ability to make me do double damage and got my revenge. Give me that map, sucker. Oh, I found some more stallrim around the corner too. I'm gonna mine this up. You can find a lot of it around the island to mine. You don't just have to buy it. Now, back to the Skull Village. The blacksmith is home and he trusts me with the knowledge to craft stallrim gear myself. I still don't have enough, unfortunately. I went on over to this island to the right of the Skull Village because there is a dungeon and just inside there's a few deposits. Still not going to be enough. So let's go check out the stallrim source. I got its location on the map and oh I have hit the jackpot. Look at all of this stallroom. There are 10 deposits that will give me free a piece. It's gonna take a bit to get it all but we'll have 30 stallroom from this place. Mailman turned up with my uh my my mail. I bet you didn't see that one coming. Now we have the latter to return to the dig site we invested in a couple days back. Looks to be going well. I talked to the elf and he said there were issues inside with Droga. Better head on in and clear things out. And I did just that. So there are many dead things. Well, they are double dead now. I found these boots too. These are a part of a really good 
favorite set of armor that increases enchanting powers by a little chunk while wearing it. As the quest progresses, we'll get the other pieces to the set. I return to the elf, and he wants more gold. Yeah, feels like I'm getting played for sure, but uh, I gave it to him, and now we have to wait for more mail. I'm gonna make the heavy set of storeroom, one for me and one for my bestie, so we're gonna need two full sets. And I'm also gonna work on two-handed weapons. I'd like to get all of my skills to legendary at some point, so swapping one-handed weapons to two-handed now that I've done it with the one-handed might be smart. And I'm gonna head home for now to hang up some things I'd collected. My inventory is a mess. I went and upgraded my armor and weapons for me and my friend as well. I'm not gonna wear it yet because it's not enchanted and I want the full set of enchanting gear before I do that. We'll swap over to the storeroom gear soon-ish, maybe. I'm gonna stuff them in this barrel until then. I'm back to Solstheim, heading out of Raven Rock now to go to that giant mushroom in the distance. Uh, hold this for me, thank you, appreciate it. This is the place where Nelof lives, the dark elf. I went into the shroom and headed on up to have a chat. He said the black books belong to the Daedric Prince Harmaeus Mora. And Nelof actually has a book right here, but it's not connected to Mirak. We're gonna need to find one that is connected to him. He says there's one in some ruins nearby, so we rolled out in hopes of getting our hands on it. Oh, I did free up this area using Bend Will too. Killed some bandits hanging out outside the ruins and waited for Nelof to catch up. Then he used the cube he had to open the door and there is the black book inside. We can't get to it yet because it's under some bulletproof glass apparently. So we have to head down deeper into this place to the boiler room to do some magic. It's a bit of a puzzle going through collecting more of these cubes to be able to get enough for all of these pedestals and now we should be good. Push this button and now the book is raised up and out. Now this one we have to read and finish to progress the main Dragonborn DLC story so let's give it a go. The way it works is we have to get around the book and pass through these chapters until we finish the book. The chapter Chapters act as checkpoints, so if we go down, we can continue from the start of the chapter we were on. But I didn't have to do that, I stormed through the lurkers and seekers until I made it to this creepy guy. This is Harmaeus Mora himself, the Daedric Prince of Knowledge, and we met him in the last video while we were trying to get Ogma Infinium, so he recognized me. He did surprise me with the, the second, second word to the Ben Will shout, but said it's not gonna be power. enough to defeat Mirak. He'll give me the third word if I trade him some knowledge. It wants to know what secrets the Skull village are keeping from him. At the end of all of these black books, we also have a choice between three different rewards. This one was a choice between increasing the powers of three different shouts. And the only one I'd really been using out of the three here is Unrelenting Force. So I chose that one and left the book and instantly tried it out on Nelof. It doesn't look any different, but sometimes it can disintegrate people. He didn't seem to mind being a test dummy, he just walked it off. Leaving the ruins, there was a dragon spewing Mirak propaganda at me. I killed it and sucked up its soul, and now we have to go back to the Skull Village. Thorn says he might be more willing to give their secrets to the Daedric Prince if I promise to cleanse those other stones on the island I've not done yet. So I spent some time killing cultists and clearing out lurkers cleansing the island. One down. Now the one by Raven Rock. Down it goes. Finally, this one at the back of Solstheim. And that is all of the stones sorted out. I was about to sell some stuff and check traders, but I've got my mail now and a letter about the investment we made. The miners he hired are dead and we have to go clear out Droger again. There is a lot more of this place uncovered now. At this point, we could go and get some other pieces to that enchanting set, but I don't think we can get all of it yet, so I'm not too worried about collecting in them all at the minute. The clearing them all out, I find out that Rallus wants another investment, this time a free thousand coin. We have no choice but to give it to him if we want to get that mask. Got a little bit distracted, all of the standing stones have been freed and I had to go tell Storn of the Skull Village. And he said that- uh, wait, what are you doing, Freya? Your father's right there, you weirdo. He said that what I'd done was enough and he decides to give in and give Harmaeus Mora the knowledge he wants. And that looks painful. He gave me the word of power though, so that's nice. 
Gonna get this out of here, not gonna be needing that anymore. Now we supposedly have the power to take down Mirak. Stop moping around, Freya, we've got work to do. So I read the book we need to read and went to where he's hiding again. Now we have to travel through the book like we have previously, collecting books and getting past the chapters. I got all the way to chapter four and I failed. See, I did it on purpose, I promise. My inventory is so full that I don't think I can carry Marek's crap when I kill him. So let's go home and quickly drop some things off. Someone was asking how I had so many ingredients in the last part and this is a big reason why. I just buy out every alchemist I see whenever I get the chance. It's also another reason why I'm always having to go home to empty my pockets, but who cares? Now back to Soul's time to make my way through this book. I had a few close calls and now I'm kinda worried I didn't bring enough potions. I'm using healing spells, but they are to complement the potions a little. I'd rather pause combat and use a potion safely instead of scrambling to use a spell if I'm panicking. Fill in my pockets with books, yeah. About to have to go back home again, my inventory's gonna be full. I made it to this room where we have to match some books to symbols on pedestals. After we've done that, we can go through this chapter. Then I fought off these seekers to get the last word of dragon aspect on this wall. I unlocked it using a dragon soul and we're gonna have to try that- Oh, not. I'm dead. Was it you that did that? What a jerk. I shouted Dragon Ren to cripple him and he killed me again. I've done this before, I swear. See, we have to use Bend Will on that dragon and now he will land and let us ride him. He's gonna take us straight to Mirak for an interesting fight. See, the other time I had a fight with Mirak on YouTube, I remember the fight being very different to this one. It was a lot of spawning in Atronauts and hiding behind stuff. But this time though, it felt very fast paced. Like I was in trouble for sure because I did stop to heal a few times. But after you get his health down a fair bit, he will retreat and kill a dragon that's been flying around above to consume its soul and heal. So as soon as he became able to be hit again, I'd have to take the chance to get his health down quick before he had a chance to do the same to me. I'd also triggered my Berserker's Rage racial skill, which has got to be one of the most OP things in this game and I love it. After he consumes three dragon souls total to heal and you take his health down one more time, Hameas Mora shows up saying he has a New Dragonborn and the jerk stole my kill. Looted his body and got a bunch of cool stuff, including that third mask. Now if we trigger this book, we can use it to leave, but we also have the ability to spend a dragon soul to reset one of my skills. So if I want to get all of my perks back for my heavy armor skill tree, for example, we can do that. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing it right now, but it's there if we need to use it. Now let's get out of here, and while we wait for more mail, I've got a few of these East Empire pendants from around the island. Now there's a lot of these to collect and you can turn them into someone for coin. But as a collector, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to find each and every single one of them and keep them for myself. I have a list I found online of all of their locations, so let's go and start collecting them. I waited until the people were out of their houses in the day and took all of my armor off to sneak better. My character isn't sneaky in the slightest, so I need all of the help I can get. The first pendant to get is in this house in Raven Rock. Moved super slow in case anyone was still at home and broke into this strong box to get it. That is four East Empire pendants in total so far. Altogether, there is 30 free that we have to collect. I won't show you me getting all of them. I don't feel like teaching you guys how to count to 30 free today. I'm just gonna run around slowly checking them all off the list. I was inside a Reeklin hideout and yeah, this is a suspicious amount of those books. Where did they get all of these books? It's gonna be weird for a few people that I'm not showing all of the locations I go to and talking about them because I'm collecting some stuff like black books and words of power along the way. If there's anything super important like those black books, I will show you, but I'm not really finishing every area. The pendants are early into a big place. I'm just grabbing the pendant and then I'm leaving. If and when I pick new things to collect and it ends up leading me back to those places, then so be it. I like not overwhelming myself by collecting every single thing in the game at the same time, you know? Set goals like the Daedric artifacts to go get and then I pick something else once I'm done collecting those. Getting the rest of the pendants is gonna have to wait because I had another letter from Rallis. And it looks like some of the miners are still alive, but yeah, Droga have once again killed a few of them. So we need to head on in to clear them out. Looks like more of the area has been uncovered and I even picked up a few of the pieces of the enchanted armor set too. I didn't plan on it, but they were right in front of me, so I had to grab them. The Droga got cleared out and of course Rallis wants 
once even more coin. This time, 5,000 septums. I gave it to him and now we have to wait for our mail once more. I had to go home to drop some things off. My inventory is a wreck and I gotta say, I had a bit of a freak out. See, I'd given my follower Marek's gear to carry for me to help out and he had this staff on him, but it looks like... He doesn't have the sword. But I went back to the dig site we've been investing into and I got another piece of the enchanted set. That's number four. But here was my thinking. A droga used a shout that knocked the sword from my followers' hands when he chose to use it. The last place I went it could have happened was in here. So I walked around staring at the floor looking for it and thank the heavens. There it is. That is the last time I ever give any important weapons to my orc follower. Speaking of while I was looking for more pendants, I found this unique two-handed weapon. I will be taking that. Oh, I got my mail, and this looks to be the final part of this investing quest, and we can finally get that last mask. All the miners are dead, again, and reading this journal, it looks like Rallis was trying to sacrifice the people digging. Let's head on in and see what's going on. Again, more Droger inside to kill. I did get another piece of the enchanting set. Oh, and I did get my alteration up to level 100, so I'm gonna make that a legendary skill to reset it. Now that I've got my perks back, uh, I'm gonna stop using alteration, I think. I don't really need it now. I totally know what I'm doing here. I'm not just trying different combinations until one works. There we go. And there is another piece of the enchanting set. Okay, before we make it to the dragon priest, I'm gonna spend some perk points. First in the restoration skill tree, I'm gonna take recovery two to regen magicka even faster. I'll also take dual cast in for rest Restoration. Now, dual cast and restoration spells make it a more powerful version of that spell. Next, I want fire enchanter and frost enchanter. So fire and frost enchants on weapons and armor are 25% stronger. Then over to smithin, I want to take dragon armor. Now we can make dragon and dragon bone armor and weapons. Still going, next I'm taking reflect blows in the heavy armor tree. That gives me a 10% chance to reflect melee damage back to the enemy when I wear heavy armor. And I will take take the final haggler perk for better prices. Not that I need more coin, but I'm just being greedy. Now through this door to Rallis, who is raising the dragon priest. Ran around, smacking the crap out of it until he went down and there is the final mask we needed. Rallis says he doesn't remember anything and that none of it was his fault. I let him live for now, but I don't believe him. Oh, and by the way, I know he has a unique weapon. I, I I didn't know when I let him live originally. I'll kill him later. Found another black book before I left as well. Now that is every single mask you can get in the Dragonborn DLC. I'm gonna head home to get them on display. Mask one and mask two. That is all four of them collected. And every single Dragon Priest mask in the game as well. I put that stupid sword up there too and the champion's cudgel. Oh, I need to sell some things in town to clear out the junk I don't want. I've not been here for a while. This is my other house that I used to farm potion ingredients. I needed to get my alchemy back up so that we can take alchemist level 5 before I started making my new set of armor. There we go. Now that we've got that done, I also found every single piece of that enchanting set in the investing quest. And while wearing a bunch of it, enchants will be 10% better. I'm also gonna take a potion of fortify enchanting for another first 30% enchanting power. I know I don't need this new set. Uh, it's mostly just a vanity thing for me. But we are going to be switching over to two-handed as well, just to work on that skill tree a little bit. All right, here we go. There is my new set of armor. I went for heavy armor and two-handed weapon enchants on all that I could, and then some stamina and magicka enchants on what was left. Yeah, like I said, we're switching over to two-handed to change things up for me. I'd eventually like to get all of my skills, legendary skills, and that's never going to happen if we stick to one-handed weapon. The enchants on my hammer are a little heavier than what I normally use. This will have to be recharged more often. I've got frost enchants on it. Frost enchants on stallroom gear are a little better than normal, so that's why I went with that. My follower also has his own set of gear, which has slightly different enchants. What are you doing on that table? Down. You're making a mess. I'm gonna put two points into the barbarian perk in the two-handed skill tree. That is all of my perk points gone. But we have a lot in one-handed just sitting there, not getting used now. So I went back to Solstheim and read the black book Waken Dreams to go back where I killed the Mirak. And I'm gonna spend a dragon soul resetting the one-handed skill tree to get all of those perks back. Now we have plenty for the two-handed perks. I'm gonna take champion stance so that my power attacks with 
two-handed weapons cost 25% less stamina. And I'm gonna leave this awful place. And now we're gonna get back to hunting down those pendants. Get to work on my two-handed skill while doing it. Yeah, we are still easy to kill. It's fine, I'm back for revenge. There is another pendant, nice. The hunt continued into day 21, fighting some poor Reichlands to take their jewelry. I do feel so much slower and clunky with two-handed weapons, which was expected, but it will take some time to get used to the slower pacing. I now have 32 East Empire pendants. Half of them are stolen, but we don't talk about that. Last one is in this temple at Raven Rock, and I have to get the key to the tomb from this guy and go help him clear out the Ashbourne uh, down here. I'm still using restoration a lot, swinging my hammer until I get into trouble, then I switch over to those. I'm having fun with the playstyle so far. Got my two-handed to level 40, so now I can take the third Barbarian perk for even more damage. And I will take the Skull Crusher perk to ignore 25% of armor of Warhammers. Cleared out the remaining Ashbourne, and the last pendant is in this box. That is 30 free total, and all of the pendants available in the game. I could turn these into someone who gives you 500 septums per pendant. That's a nice 16,500 septums, but I seriously do not need the coin. I'm keeping all of these pendants for my collection. Not only did the Dragonborn DLC add extra Dragon Priest masks, but it actually added an extra Dragon Claw. Well, kinda. See, this one is split in two. There is two different pieces. I had to put a Droga's body right there and have him drop down into lava. Now the doors on either side have opened up. I went to the left first, I got into a fight and got thrown across the stupid room. I'm fine, I just gotta get back up. Taking down this Drogo will let me take the first half of the claw. Same thing to the right, lots of Drogo. And the second part of the claw. Then we use both of those to open up this gate in the center of the dungeon. Now we have these weird paths to get past. They disappear behind you, so you gotta be quick. And the more you do, the faster they disappear behind you. I figured out the combination to progress and to my surprise there was another dragon priest. Had no idea this guy would be here. The first attempt wasn't great. The fire traps on the floor were making me panic and I'm dead. Second attempt however was better. I kept my head and avoided the traps best I could until the priest was down. No mask on this one obviously. Got the word of power in the room and had a chat with the guy that came along with me. Got my pay and now we have the last dragon claw. Next on my to-do list is I want to complete all of these black books. I might have them all, I might not, no idea. Let's just do all of the ones that we have first and then I'll look online and see if I'm missing any. It's dark as heck running through this one and the dark hurts. It is a fairly easy book though. I made it to the end real quick and have a choice of powers to take. Nothing crazy here, I took the one that makes my power Power attacks cost no stamina for 30 seconds and I left. Next up is the Untold Legends book. This one is a little longer. But lots of chapters to pass through and lots of enemies to kill along the way. Made it to the end to so take my power and you can only have one power from each book and this one had something really interesting to me. Can now summon a Dramora butler for 15 seconds to carry things for me. I'm not sure how much stuff we can dump on this guy but I started dumping Next book is The Winds of Change, and in we go. Again, same deal as the others. Start to fight things and make it to the ends. Oh, this one's nice. Made skill books give two points instead of one. That is awesome. I will take it. Now we have one book left, and it's the exact same deal as the last few. Just have to make it to the end to this book. But before I had a chance to take a power, I was interrupted by a lurker I hadn't killed yet, and it murdered my face first. I'll be back you jerk. Luckily going back into the book we are already at the end and we are lurker free. This one had an option to make all combat skills 10% more effective so I will take that one and spend a perk point on devastating blow which will give another 25% damage to two-handed power attacks and while I'm here I'll take a great critical charge. Now can do a two-handed power attack while running that does double critical damage. Now to leave the book and head back to the giant mushroom 
room because behind that door there is a black book I found out that I don't have. It requires a key to get in there and to get the key we're gonna have to do some odd jobs for Nelloff. Like gathering up a heart stone and finding his dead steward. It smells dead and looks dead so it must be dead. He doesn't seem to care that the steward is dead, just wants me to find him a new one. So I went on over to Raven Rock and found some random dude who jumped at the chance to have the job. Now going back to Nelloff he gives us access to his staff enchanter and in the same room there is this black book. I gave it a read and it's the exact same deal as the other books. Progressing through until we get to the book of the end. This was my least favorite of the rewards so far. I just went for one that regens my magicka health and stamina fully when triggered and I left. I'm not sure what happened to day 25. I hope it's not an important day because the files for it don't seem to exist anymore. Headed on back home to find out I can't put these stupid black books away. Yeah, they are classed as a quest item even when you finish the quests attached to them. We do have all seven of them now, so that's nice at least. There also isn't a space for the split claw here, so sadly I will have to put it in my safe with my other random bits. I make a lot of trips into town to sell things. I am a collector, but I don't want all of this random crap. Going from dragon priest masks and dragon claws to bugs. Yeah, we're gonna be collecting bugs next. There's a spot in my house where we can put five different bugs in jars. I already have two of them, so let's go get the other three. First of the three is at the same place our follower lived at before we stole him. All we have to do is go into the cellar of this orc stronghold and there it is, easy. Second one is in this cave called Dusk Glow Crevice. Send bandits inside to take down with my hammer. And going deep enough, we find find it on this set of drawers. That's the moth and dragonfly collected. Last one we need is the firefly and fittingly it's in a lighthouse over here. Not far from where we just got that moth. Just inside the lighthouse it's just up on this fireplace and that is all five of the bugs in jars collected. Returned home to get them all on display and there we go. I've not had all of these before. That's a first for me. There's a spot in my collected room for the shield of Iskramor and Ufrad. To get both of those we're gonna have to join up with the companions in Whiterun. In the middle of town there's a building that the companions use to operate out of. And walking into it you are met by some of them having a fist fight. Uh, we have to talk to Kodlak about joining up. He seems willing to let me join but this jerk Vilkas doesn't want me in. Kodlak tells Vilkas to test my arm so I go outside to fight but my hammer's making him complain that I'm using magic so I swapped out to an unenchanted Nordic pickaxe and I beat the crap out of him with that. Ah yes, I heard you gave him quite a thrashing. It was more of a picking, not a, not a thrashing. They get Farkas to show me to the sleeping quarters and I get a job to rough someone up that had been causing problems right here in Whiterun but not to kill anyone. I wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into here. The person we need to fight is this lady. She has her own quest too. Uh, she'll challenge you to a fight and wages some coins so we are hitting two birds with one stone. Now she is doing barely any damage to me but I'm also doing very little damage to her. This fight was very very long. I recorded the whole thing and it turned out to be 7 minutes 10 seconds total. Yeah, this fight was more of an endurance battle than when I had a fight with Alduin, the Eater of Worlds. I have no doubt I can win any fist fight in the game with how tanky I am. Just comes down to endurance. Whether or not my fingers can handle all of the clicking. I had a lot of time to think and around the six minute mark I came to the idea that I'm gonna marry this woman. Yep, after this there is no other person I could spend the rest of my orc days with. I finally won the brawl and her praise caused heavy blushing before heading back to Farkas to tell him it's done. Now talking to Skiro, he wants me to retrieve a fragment of Ufrad with Farkas and that this will be my trial. Sadly my orc follower will have to be replaced by Farkas for now but we will get him back later. On the way to the fragment I made my heavy armor skill legendary too. Uh, I put one point back into Juggernaut. I did it for further leveling. My armor rating is way lower now but it's still high enough that we should be fine. This is the place we need to be. Met by some droga almost immediately inside and pretty quickly made it to this room where if we pull this lever we get trapped and Farkas gets surrounded by silver hand members who want to kill him. He reveals himself as a werewolf and folds them all like pretzels. And then he kindly releases us. 
He had a brief talk with me about it before saying that we should move on. It was weird, I got a lot of sneak attacks inside. I'm about as sneaky as a thunderstorm, but I was making it happen. Also got heavy armor up enough to take the second juggernaut perk. Something insanely satisfying about making a skill legendary and leveling it back up. Made it to the end room to take the word of power from the wall, and there is the fragment of Ufrand. I feel like I'm saying Ufrad wrong every single time I say it. Now we get ambushed by about 20 Droga. I'm kinda happy about it because tanking the hits will give me a lot of heavy armor levels back. Down goes the last one and I got my heavy armor up to level 40 so I can take the third Juggernaut perk. And I'll also take Well Fitted back too. Also going into the two-handed skill tree to take the fourth Barbarian and the second Skull Crusher. Now that we have the fragment, we can get out of here. Now that we have the fragment, we can get out of here. I returned to Wide Run to talk to the companions and they welcomed me into their inner circle. Then they told me to help out with some jobs. But before doing that, I went home. See, I'd like more carry weight. Uh, we can get more carry weight by upping our stamina and you can also get enchanted gear with carry capacity and even use potions of strength to get more temporarily. But in the pickpocket skill tree, there is a perk called extra pockets. That perk will increase my carry capacity by a nice 100 permanently and I think for a collector that will be very nice. I have my follower and my butler to carry stuff but having more time before having to worry about moving stuff around would be lovely. So I enchanted some gear with pickpocket enchants and headed back to Whiterun. Got my enchanted pickpocket and gear on and yeah not feeling great about how I look but let's go steal some stuff. I always find it funny, the bits of random food you can find on, like, everyone. They all have steaks, fish, and leeks in their pockets. Just imagining them waking up in the morning and stuffing a chicken breast in their pocket before leaving for work. I did take the first pickpocket skill too. Didn't take long at all before I hit level 50 pickpocketing. That's all we really need to do for now. Uh, I will take Night Thief. I don't need that, but I have to take it to get to the extra pockets perk. Now we have six. 625 carry capacity, as well as a follower and butler. That is a lot of space. And what are we gonna do with all of our stolen items? I'm gonna store everything. I have a pickpocket in this sack. Yep, every single thing. Anyways, I'm gonna be getting married, so I need my best man. I went to get my orc friend back. To get married in this game, we have to head to Riften and go to the Temple of Mara to buy a amulet of Mara. Now, if I wear this and talk to someone, it shows I'm interested in them. Back to White Run to talk to that lady who also seems interested in me, and we agree to organize the wedding. Ran back to Riften to tell the priest I'd like to arrange a wedding, and he told me to come back later for that wedding. I went and sold some things around town to kill some time. Now, I don't like skipping time like this. Uh, I've done it a few times, but it feels like I'm wasting precious hours we have to collect things in this 100 days. But I don't want to go off and do something, then come back later, so I just skipped a few hours to get to the wedding. It got started and we said our vows. She doesn't seem all too thrilled. It doesn't feel like I thought it would. It's like we were meant to be. I told her to go back to Hendraheim. That's my main house I've been living at. We also got these bond of matrimony rings. Add in this to my collection and I'm never going to wear it. I'm back at Wide Run and I'd like to get the investor perk. It says I can invest 500 gold with a shopkeeper to increase his available gold permanently. Yeah, it says his specifically. I hate to ruin your Tuesday, Acadia, but you're his. I had no idea Skyrim was just one big sausage party. But it also felt weird about about who I could and couldn't invest with. See, it says shopkeepers. It makes sense that this blacksmith over by the companions won't take an investment. But the court wizard in Dragon's Reach will accept the investment. And this guy at the Huntsman won't. It just felt a bit inconsistent to me and I'd like to see in writing what the rules actually are when they decided who can and who can't take investments. I'm just gonna give an investment to any merchant I see that will accept one from this point on. Anyways, we're gonna head on back to Yorvaska to continue with the companion's work. There is some mages getting up to no good not far from Whiterun and Farkas wants me to go destroy them. His words, not mine. On the way, I bumped into not one, but two ancient dragons. I got them to land 
land using Dragon Rend, and to say they kicked the crap out of me would have been putting it nicely. Like I said, I'm insanely OP, but also not really at the same time. The second attempt, I popped a two-handed potion and used Berserker's Rage to do an insane amount of damage, killing both dragons in three hits apiece. I ate their souls and moved on. I'm at the place Farka sent me to, and there's lots of ghosts telling me they're being forced to attack me. Same inside, there's lots of ghosts shouting the same nonsense. Looks to be a trap ahead with a empty chest and a word of power to take. Jump on and yeah, if anyone genuinely fell in there and was surprised, I'm sorry, but you deserved it. I got trapped by a mage, uh, picked my way out and smashed his head in. Now we can return to Farkas and tell him the good news. Which I did. Weirdo was waiting by the door for me. Said Skull wanted a chat, so I went on over and he... Are you sleeping with your eyes open? I woke him up, I think. He said to meet him at the Underforge tonight. The Underforge is a cave under the blacksmith's workplace, and going inside, you see Ayala has transformed into a werewolf. Skill filled the bowl in front of us with Ayala's blood, and I took a sip. A f big one. I blanked out and when I woke up I was a werewolf. We also have a new skill tree for the beast that we can level up by eating people. I just stood around until I blanked out again and when I woke up I was with Ayala in the middle of nowhere. He said they have a celebration prepared for me. There is a pack of werewolf hunters camped nearby at Gallows Rock called the Silver Hand and we are gonna slaughter all of them. Skewer is here too but he ran ahead scouting. I turned into the beast and stormed on over. Yeah this is is brutal. Feeding heals me a little and increases the time I can stay in this form. Unlike the Vampire Lord, we can only use this power once a day, so once we get forced to turn back, we will have to wait a while before changing again. I got my first werewolf level pretty quick and put it into bestial strength. This will make me do 25% more damage as a werewolf. My beast form didn't last till the end, but my character is enough of a beast to handle these suckers easily. Skewer, however, is good and truly dead. Muppet got himself killed. I'll take his armor for my collection. Ayala says we will get revenge for Skewer and send me to go assassinate a Silver Hand leader. It's not gonna be a sneaky assassination. I stood by the gate for a while waiting for the cowards to open the gate to come fight me. I did smack a few through the bars but jumped the wall in the end and took them all down. Trend continued inside, I stormed through, healing myself and swinging the hammer until everyone was dead. The main guy in here had a full set of dragon plate armor. Everyone's dead, I ran back to Ayala with the news of the revenge and she sent me off again to do some more damage. This time at these towers to take down more of them and take some plans. I got it done quick, grabbed the plans and headed back. He said Codlack was getting suspicious of all of the revenge and that he wants to talk to me. I took a seat and headed a chat with the old man. Said Skewer's death had already been avenged and started to talk to me about how he doesn't want to die a werewolf. See, werewolves don't go to Sovngar when they die, and he says he's still a true Nord and doesn't want to end his days as a beast. Tells me how becoming a werewolf came about and to go wipe out the witches that gave the blessing and get one of their heads to rid his beast. Before doing that, I headed home to drop some things off. Looks like the wife made it home. Sadly, I don't have my orc follower with me right now. He keeps getting sent away and replaced by a companion, so I will go get him back later when I'm done with these quests. I went to the cave Codlack said the witches were hanging out at, and I stormed the first one I seen. Now technically, we are done. I have one of the heads, and I can go back. But there was an optional objective to take all of them down, and yeah. I got all of them before I left, uh, mostly to collect the heads for myself. It's sick, but I want to add them to my collection. Return to Yarvaska to find the Silver Hand had attacked, and Codlack is dead. Yeah, I'm not sure where his cloves are, but the Silver Hand ran off with all of the fragments of Ufred, so we need to go get them all back. I went out straight away to once again confront the Silver Hand. Inside, I turned into a werewolf to get some XP for my beast. Nothing more fun than mauling the Silver Hand as a werewolf. I got another level, I spent it on bestial strength. That's the third one now. I just want some more damage. Managed to get the form to last all of the way till the end of the area and used it to take down the final few silver hand members. Now the fragments we came here for are sat on that table right there, but despite having hands, I can't pick anything up until I turn back to my normal form. It took ages. 
There we go. Now we can take those and leave. Going into Wide Run, I got an objective to attend Kodlak's funeral. It was a large turnout. Ayala lit the wood alight with a torch. Why are you trying to fist bump me? Wait. Did you kill Kodlak? Yurland wanted me to get one final fragment that Kodlak kept in his room. I went and took it and then gave it to him, and was told to meet the other companions in the Underforge. Going in, they were talking about Kodlak wanting to not be a werewolf anymore. And then the blacksmith turned up with a repaired Ufrad, saying I should be the one to take it into battle. It's a lot weaker than my hammer, but sure. We're on our way to break Kodlak's curse, even with him being dead. With Ufrad in hand, I went into the middle of nowhere to get to Iskramor's tomb. Inside, I met with the other companions and gave Iskramor Ufrad to open the way ahead. Then I took it back. It's mine now, sucker. There were lots of fallen companions inside to take down. As I progressed, some of the companions opted to not go any further into the tomb. By the time we made it to the end, it was just me and Ayala left. And there is Kodlak's ghost. Says I can still lift the curse and to throw a witch's head into the fire. Doing that started a fight with Kodlak's beast. I popped a two-handed potion and used Berserker's Rage to do a silly amount of damage and finish it in a few hits. Kodlak says I'm the new harbinger of the companions and disappeared. Kinda. I can still see him. In the room, there is a chest that has the shield of Iskromor as well. Now we have both the items we came for and we are done with the companion's main story. Better head on home and get them displayed. Hang up the shield and hang up Ufred. Now somewhere in this pile of crap, there is a Def Brand helmet. There it is. This is one piece of a set of armor you can get in the Dragonborn DLC. We're gonna go back to Solstheim and get the set, as well as some other things on the island. This helmet looks really cool, but it's a light armor piece, sadly. Before we get the rest of that set, I wanna get my partner in crime back. Hopefully, you are with me for the rest of the video now, my friend. Now I have this map, I'm not 100% sure where I found it. I think it was with the helmet somewhere in a chest. And it shows four X's that I'm assuming marks the other pieces of armor. I ran over to the first X and it was guarded by some reavers. There is the chest dug out of the sand and there is the second piece of armor. Now looking at the map, we have to go further north for the next one. I just walked along the edge of the island until I seen trouble and a chest. Poor Reichlin's garden, it didn't even know I hid them. There is the third piece in the chest. The last location on the map is to the side of the giant mushroom. The chest was this time guarded by some Ashborn that had killed some people that were in search of the treasure. I got the last piece, but also a key. A key and an objective to explore a place called Guildenhall Burrow. I took out some reavers outside, and inside I could open this door with a key and holy golf! I mean, gold. My notes say golf for some reason. This is pretty awesome. I'm not sure how much was in here, but it felt like a lot. Pressing on, I may get to this room where I fight a ghost boss and end up getting a few curved swords that I believe also go on my wall. Feels weird leaving this set in my safe and not putting it on a mannequin. We have another home we could use to display stuff too. People keep mentioning that massive mod called Legacy of the Dragonborn for collectors. I want to stay away from adding mods to the save for now, but I might eventually do that for sure. There is the two curved swords I just got. They have a place here too. I want to try and cover a lot of the Dragonborn DLC items we can collect in this video. And I'm not gonna lie, this place confused me a little at first. See, I came for a helmet I seen on the unique items list and ended up finding this area with a guy that had a ton of unique stuff. I'm gonna assume this is anniversary edition content and it wanted me to do something, but first I'm gonna go get what I came here for originally. This place is wild. I wasn't expecting in anything like this, but this helmet is why I came. Like I said, it was on the list of unique items in Solstheim. That part of the quest that confused me a little led me to a cave to the side of Raven Rock. I wore the outfit I found on the guy in the Dwemer ruins because I read the people inside won't be hostile if I do. And again, I'm not gonna lie, uh, inside I got overwhelmed with the 500 quests they dumped on me, so I left. <laughs> <laughs> I might be back. I wasn't interested in that right now. I got items I want to collect. Like a unique named Nordic pickaxe that Rallis has. Yeah, you remember that guy we invested a crap load of money into? That mining quest. That Rallis. And there he is in the wretched Netch hanging out. Now the pickpocket chance is a whopping 0%. So with the odds against me, I killed him. 
Thank you for that, Dralis. Nice doing business with you. I didn't know he had that. I would have killed him earlier if I knew. Over there to the side of the main island is Hawker Island. I've been here a few times, but I never got the unique item, Hawksbane. It's a mace that's especially effective against Hawkers. You know, for people that have those Hawker slain builds. I think there was a giant Hawker here too, but I killed it a while back. I was worried about this next one. I'm dead. That was quick. I'm back, suckers. Yeah, I was worried about this one because I cleared these people out once before when trying to get those pendants, and I wasn't sure if that meant the item was gone forever, but the enemies respawned and the leader had Stormfang in his inventory, which was what I wanted. My inventory was a mess, so I went back home to put some things on display and stored away. We're nearly 50 minutes into the video, and if you're still watching, I'm gonna assume you're enjoying it. These videos take a long time to make, so I would appreciate a like if that is the case. It also lets me know know that you want to see more videos like this one. I also want to take the time to say thank you for the support lately. Six videos uploaded and almost 23,000 subscribers. I didn't expect the videos to do so well and I'm still learning. I'll get better, I promise. I have so many videos I want to make and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. And if I do disappear, I'm likely dead. But for now, as far as I can tell, my heart's still beating, so let's go collect some more crap. For some reason, I totally missed this guy's last name and never knew he is Delvin's brother from the Thieves Guild. He even has one of those Thieves Guild symbols by his door, I totally missed too. There's a unique set of Thief armor you can get from Glover Mallory by helping him get back a formula for improved bone mold. Headed out right away to the Reekling Cave where the guy that stole the formula got himself killed. I took the formula from his corpse and now we can go back. I did get my two-handed up to level 80 on day 47 so I can take the final Barbarian perk to do double damage with two-handed weapons. I want to take Sweep in the same skill tree too. Now sideways power attacks with two-handed weapons hit all targets in front of you. And I will also take Tower of Strength again in the heavy armor skill tree. Now to return to Glover Mallory. He gives me a key to his house. I think he's trying to tell me something. But the key also opens this door in the house with a ton of goodies for me to take. Including this set of thieves armor called Black God's Armor. It looks pretty cool but it's wide opposites of what I've been using. So it won't really fit my build sadly. I still wanted to get it. I spent some time next running around collecting these gems. Not just for the gems themselves, but because they unlock areas inside a Dwemer ruin that will lead me to a unique bow. You remember this place with the cubes? Well, I forgot to take the cubes back for one, but I also didn't grab this gem in the ruins. Then back to the Dwemer ruins named Kagrumas. Inside there are these patterns in the doors and placing the gems in the same order as the patterns will begin a trial. Killing the enemies that spawn will complete the trial and open up additional doors. Until finally you finish all of the trials and make it to this room where there is a dwarven black bow of fate. It's a really cool looking bow. I also got these arrows and a cool arrow diagram. That is a lot of cool stuff we got here. Moving on, there's a shack on the island that has a note pinned to the wall by an arrow. The note says, meet me here at midnight. It's midnight now and nobody's here. I went to travel to Raven Rock and ran back to sea and still nothing. Now there's a merchant that's supposed to turn up at midnight that trades another unique bow we can buy. I guess we're gonna have to try to time it and come back at some point later to see if he's there. For now, Nalof should have another quest for us. And eventually we can get some unique robes from his quests, so let's progress them a little bit. First, he wants me to examine a Briar Heart Warrior, but didn't give me the location of one, so we will have to go out and find one ourselves. I've never seen a Briar Heart on Solstheim, so we have to head back to Skyrim and go more to the left of the map near Markov. I know there are Forsworn here, but when I went to clear them out, I found no briar heart, just other kinds of forsworn weirdos. Bumped into a random bunch of stormcloaks taking down a forsworn camp. I helped them out, but again, still no briar heart. Went to this location called Hag's Rock because I remembered there was lots of forsworn here. And finally, I found a briar heart, but I died. Perfect. I went back to the same area and got my revenge. Now we can harvest that briar heart for Nelof. Back on Solstheim, the giant mushroom was under attack by Ashborn. Cleared them out and returned to Nelof, who was just as ungrateful as always. Now he's wanted me to find the source of the attacks and gave me a tracking ring to wear. When I wear it, it will highlight the trouble when I'm within 100 feet of it. Walked around the mushroom and found a small graveyard that had a heartstone and a staff buried. Told Nelof that was the source of all of the problems and he said, that the grave belonged to an old apprentice of his that was supposed to have died. Clearly the grave didn't have her in it. So 
Clearly the grave didn't have her in it, so she still might be alive and be the cause of the attacks. Casted a spell that revealed exactly where she was hiding out. I went to the tower and I struggled to find my way in. Eventually found the tunnel and pushed on through, fighting the Ashborn inside. Now I totally underestimated the lady at the end. I ran at her with my hammer and fell to the ground like a sack of potatoes. And again, and again. I was spamming potions and all sorts just to get close and managed to get her to her knees. Then I picked her up and ripped her heart out for all of the pain she caused me. That was brutal, but it felt great after all of the time she took me down. There is the robes I was after. Now it's the same as Neloff's robes, but weaker in chance on it. Speaking of Neloff, I went back to tell him the good news. He did give me a staff as a reward, but I'm probably never gonna use it. It's midnight now, so let's go back to the shack. And there is the merchant, but sadly he isn't selling the unique bow I wanted. Instead, the jerk has it equipped. I can't pickpocket it off him. The way I managed to get the bow was I gave him a melee weapon and then I attacked him and used the bend will shout to chill him out. Now that he's calmed down, we can talk to him and he has unequipped the bow and we can buy it. Called the glass bow of the stag prince. And it says the wielder receives an increasingly powerful blessing for every 20 animals killed by the bow. It's a really interesting bow. Uh, now he can leave the merchant be. I did travel back to Sky Skyrim to collect potion ingredients from my second home and headed back to my main home to put things on display. I got this whole rack of unique weapons complete and lots of random junk goes in this safe. Time to whip out the pickpocket in gear again because I want to head to Falkreef to do a little bit of stealing. There are skills higher in the pickpocket skill tree that could be really handy and fun for a collector. One is called misdirection, it'll let me pickpocket equipped weapons and the other is perfect touch which will allow me to pickpocket a equipped items. I seem to always have some skill points built up since I'm a higher level now. I don't know where to put them all. So why not dump them into the pickpocket skill tree? I'm just gonna run around pickpocketing things from everyone until I make it to level 100. It's been about 20 minutes and there is a problem. See, I've robbed everyone possible in Falkreef and I'm so insanely close to level 70 to be able to pickpocket their weapons too. But there's not a single person left to rob. I even got the Jarl's pockets. So I went to Raven Rock on Solstein to get the final level since I need more stuff here anyway. I took the cut purse skill uh, that will make my pickpocketing gold easier and finally I got misdirection. I can now pickpocket equipped weapons and there is a guy in this building in Raven Rock. This guy. I want the hood he's wearing. Uh, it's marked as a unique item from this place so I want it. I think I might be able to kill him and I'm not against doing that but if we get the perfect touch skill we can pickpocket it from him and I'd also like to get every single single skill tree to a legendary status anyway, so why not work towards that while getting the unique item and saving his life? Saving his life from, well, me. I also don't really want to take all of the guards' weapons and leave the place entirely defenseless, so I will try to be careful. You aren't as attractive as you'd like to believe. Hey, what? Keep your hands Excuse me? What? <laughs> Wait, you want to say that again? That is pretty much the Hula of Raven Rock's pockets picked and I'm still not at level 100 yet. I went over to the giant mushroom to steal from them too, but only got one extra level from the few people here. Why is there a dragon skeleton hanging from my house? Does that increase or lower my property value? I'm not sure. I was back home to drop off all of the stuff I stole. Oh, and my butler can't carry much, by the way. Pretty small carry weight, I found out. Gonna keep everything I stole in this endless sack for safekeeping. And I went to everyone's favorite city, Windhelm, to finish off level in the skill tree. Don't cancel me for saying that, I'm joking. I really do like the way this place looks, though. I stole stuff until I made it to level 100 pickpocketing to take the perfect touch skill. And I'm not sure there's a more hilarious skill in the game honestly. Now I can take this blacksmith's apron and he will have no idea why it just got cold all of a sudden. He's headed home just as confused as I am. <laughs> Back to Raven Rock where to my surprise those robes are not showing up in this guy's inventory. I triple checked Google and we should be able to get it, right? No other choice then. 
Uh, I thought they could be killed. <laughs> okay, I just watched a YouTube video of someone else doing this, and you can definitely, you should be able to get these robes. Can someone let me know in the comments what's going on? I'm bound to be doing something stupid. Weird. Anyways, I'm gonna run off and get some other bits I forgot to grab on Soul's time. Like, in the dig site we invested in, there is this cool skull on this table in the first room. Got lots of interesting markings on it, and yeah, it just looks really cool. You can get out of here. Now we head into this cave called Frossel. I've already cleared this place out, but forgot to grab another unique item. In this tunnel to the left, there is a... Reichlin, I forgot to kill, apparently. But behind him, there is a random Imperial Horn. It's not much to look at, but I wanted it for my collection. Looking at the list of unique items on Solstheim, if we go to this house and go south from here to the shore, can get this broken iron war axe. There's also a handle somewhere, and I really struggled to find it. It's right there. It took me way too long to find it. It was hiding right there by the grass. Now we have both broken pieces. Can't do anything with them, but they are unique items in the game, and I wanted them. Lots of running around the island going on, now to the Frost Moon Crag. This is a pack of werewolves, and they recognize me as one of them, and welcomed me in. Now, if we come here as a werewolf, this guy will offer to sell us four different rings that will enhance my werewolf's abilities. They're all pretty expensive, but it's not like I don't have the coin. The first one is Ring of Bloodlust. While in beast form, your attacks do 50% more damage, but you also take 50% more damage. Ring number two is Ring of Instinct. When you enter beast form, the world around you seems to slow for 20 seconds. Ring of the Hunt, while in beast form, your health regenerates. And lastly, Ring of the Moon increases the duration of howls by 25%. Now to sell them a bunch of potions to get all of that coin back. That's pretty cool. Honestly, didn't know you could get those rings until recently. After 10 plus years, every single time I play this game, I learn something new. I went to check on this guy again. Still no robes, sadly. I brought him a helmet to see if he would swap that out and let me steal the robes, but still nothing. There's another unique item you can get because of Solstheim, but not directly at Solstheim itself. I found this letter in Glover Mallory's basement, and I gave it a read. Turns out he's the dad of Sapphire from the Thieves Guild, and she doesn't know. He ran off when her mother was pregnant, and if we give her this letter, we can get a unique gem. So off to Riften to find her at the Thieves Guild. Proven harder than I thought to find her down here. I know you can find her in the B and Bard too, but I've done the Thieves Guild quest, so I thought she would have moved. Can't interact with her yet, but there she is. I guess we have to start this side quest. This guy borrowed money off her and she wants it back, but he is struggling to pay it. Now that I've started that, I can talk to Sapphire and give her the note telling her who her father is. She appreciates the letter and gives me the gem I came here for. Oh, I also took her side and told this guy to pay up, but there we go. An exquisite sapphire worth 5,000 coin. Time for my occasional trip back home to drop off all of this junk I've collected. So now that we are mostly done with Solstein for now, I kind of want to change my armor again. Lots of this is vanity for me. Uh, I don't have to do it, right? I'm handling myself fine, I just want to change things up from time to time for me. Especially with us being really late game at level 70 now. It's just fun to switch things up. Now, I already have a few bits of dragon bone gear I found or bought. It's gonna have to dip into our dragon bone and scale collection for the rest. I wanna make the insulated set because it's new to me. It looks like it has a better armor rate in two versus the other dragon bone set. And I'm gonna stick to hammers. I love the idea of switching around a massive dragon leg, smacking people with it. Now make all of this stuff legendary at the workbench and grindstone. Get it all enchanted. This part is the most stressful for me, enchanting. And just like that, we are done. I went with the same enchants we'd already been using on the armor. Leaning towards heavy armor, two-handed, stamina, and some light magicka. Hammer just has fiery soul trap on it this time. And I also made a bow for myself. I'm not sneaky at all, but there have been moments where I wished I had a bow on me, and now I will. Took the fourth juggernaut perk again, too. I've had some items in my inventory forever that have a chunk of weight to them, and I can't put them away because they're quest items. Like this sword, for example. At some point, 
I said to an orc that I would deliver it to this other orc. There we go, now it's out of my inventory, freeing up some space. Psych, I can pickpocket it back now with those new perks I took. And since the quest is done, I can store the sword or do whatever I want with it. Ah, crap. Next is this other sword. It says I have to unlock the secret of Red Eagle's tomb. I had to go into this cave and place the sword in this thing. Now a door opens up back there in the wall. And heading on in, there is a droga named Red Eagle that went down really, really easy. There was some loot inside and not much more. Really small area. But I can take this sword back now and do whatever I want with it. That is two items freed up for storage. We've done a lot of item collecting so far, but there are many other things I'd like to collect, like shouts, spells, and property. I'm gonna run around and collect every piece of property we can get our hands on now that I've built up a lot of coin. I'm gonna start with just the base game houses. All of the houses that came with the game when it first released and then we'll branch off into the Heartfire DLC and finally the Anniversary Edition houses. Starting off with Bree's home in Wide Run. We can buy a cozy little home here for just 5,000 coin. I bought it and all of its furnishings to go along with it and there it is. Easily the most nostalgic house for me. I've not owned Bree's home in a very, very long time. Not much going on inside but I love this home. Next we are off to Rifton to get the Honeyside house. We can talk to Maven's bootlicker to buy the home for just 8,000 coin. Again, I fully furnished it before checking it out. It's a little bigger than Bree's home and it's tucked away at the back of Rifton. I do really like this house too, especially for a sneak build getting to live in Rifton. It's got a nice garden around the side to go with it. Sadly, I can't just go and buy every home that easily, however. See, I did some of the Stormcloaks vs. Imperial storyline in the last collector video, but I didn't get far enough to be able to buy the Windhelm home yet. I might even have to entirely finish that storyline, I'm not sure. So let's go and progress the Civil War questline a little bit. Headed back to Whiterun to tell the Jarl Ulfric plans to attack Whiterun and he gave me an axe to give to Ulfric to get an answer from him. Ulfric didn't accept the axe and said to return it to where it came from. Now back at Whiterun to return that axe, the Stormcloaks were right behind me and now are attacking the city. So I just bought to that house. I do want to debunk something that you guys were telling me in the last video's comments. I was trying to keep the jagged crown by pickpocketing it from Hadvar's pockets to steal back later, but during that quest he was nowhere to be seen. And people told me it was because I picked Rayloff to escape Helgen with, and whoever you don't leave with is presumed to have died in Helgen. But Hadvar is right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is clearly not the case. Anyways, I helped defend Wide Run from the Stormcloaks. These guys stood no chance. I was meeting them at their spawn point. Took them all down, successfully defending the city. Now to return to Solitude to talk to General Tullius. Went right on over to do just that, and he gave me a Daedric sword. I don't need it, but that's pretty cool. I'd been told to help Ricka take the pale from the Stormcloaks, and it was at this moment I'd realized I'd been saying Ricka's name wrong for over 10 years. Great. Looks like they have more issues at the Imperial camp than just the Stormcloaks. Got a blood dragon on the loose. I smacked it with its brother's bone and talked to Ricker. He wants us to forge some Stormcloak documents. I had to go out into the middle of nowhere to the Night Gate Inn to intimidate this guy into telling me where he has seen a Stormcloak courier. He said the courier was on his way back to the inn and I met him halfway. And this is the first time I didn't have to take this guy down myself. He was busy 1v1 in a dragon and then a bunch bunch of Imperials showed up. Didn't even have to lift the finger. It's that to simply take the documents from his dead body. Return to Ricker, who'd messed with what it said, and now I'm to take them to a Stormcloak General in Dawnstar. So I did, and he bought it, and gave me five coin to get myself a drink. Nah, I'm good. I don't drink, and I'm in enemy territory anyway. Ricka says my next objective is Fort Dunstead. It's a snowy night in the Pale. Met with the Imperials and stormed the fort. They didn't know what hit them. Wasn't long before the fort was ours. Back to the City of Solitude to talk to Tullius, who gives me a blade. Take this blade as a gift. That's a, a shield. You. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he have so much power if he can't even tell the difference between a sword and a shield? Winterhold is my next objective, so I went on out to the Winterhold Imperial Camp where Ricker wants me to meet with some other men to see about rescuing some captured Imperials. It's day 66 and I got very distracted. Uh, I found these guys that had really interesting looking gear on them. Oh, Dark Sedusa gear. Don't mind if I do, I will take that. I do get distracted a lot, I don't show you every time it happens, but I can tell you for sure it does happen. <laughs> 
<laughs> I followed the quest briefly to another camp where there were more people with the gear. I took what I could, but for now we should really keep on track with what we were doing. So I went over to the next fort and started swinging. This time we had to rescue some men. There is a key somewhere, but I like to pick the locks for the XP. Now to report to Hedvar and we are done. Did you know you were supposed to die at Helgen? Now Talias was being weird about me previously giving the Stormcloaks Markov as part of the main storyline. I had to get the Imperials and Stormcloaks to agree on a truce, and I was trying to be fair with that peace meeting, okay? But now we have to get Markov back. I went to get my orders once again from Ricker, who wants me to take Fort Sungood next. If these stupid dragons would leave me alone, I went home to drop some things off and found out the fort we will be raiding next for the Legion is that one over there. Yep. The fort is my neighbor. Supposed to love your neighbor, but here I am, hitting them all over the head with my giant bone. Gotta be the nicest day for a fort takeover, I will say. It's nice and bright out. There we go, all of the storm cloaks have been taken care of, courtesy of my bone. <laughs> Talia says we are gathering for our final assault on Windhelm. I went out to the camp and there is one last fort to take before we take the fight to Ulfric himself. Met with the Imperials once again and stormed the fort. This storyline is filled with a lot of the same type of quests, but I really enjoy them. Almost as much as I enjoy doing that. My bone is soaked in blood while they run from the fort that's now ours. Ricka says it's time for the final assault. We are attacking Windhelm to take down Ulfric. I had a nice stroll on my way. I think I'm late. Maybe. There is Windhelm. It looks like they are done and didn't need me. Or not, they are still outside. Headed on in to start taking the city, smashing through the spiked walls and bashing on the stormcloaks. I was ahead of the other Imperials the whole time. They were struggling to keep up. Made it to Ulfric's door, taking down the last few in the way, and headed on in to confront him. He didn't surrender and instead opted to fight. Stonefist went down in one hit. Took his gear for my collection. Ulfric was next and put up a little bit more of a fight. I took two swings to get him to his knees. He says to let me take him down because it would make for a better song and Tullius gave me his sword to use it, but I used my bone to bonk him on the head. I took his gear for my collection too. And that is the quest line done. I'm gonna leave and come back to buy that house when they've cleaned up a little. I didn't wait long. I went to store some things back home and went right back. Town is tidy again and opened up but there was a lot of things going on in the Palace of the Kings. Y'all's everywhere and everyone was mad at me. Not sure who the heck I can buy the house off. I guess it's late. I found the Y'all sleeping and he said I could buy property. Just have to find his stewards. I waited until morning and found him in the main hall. 12,000 coin for the house. He hasn't given me options to decorate it yet. I bought it and there is the house. Real nice on the outside, but the inside is a dump. And a bit of a crime scene. Yep, this doesn't look good. I asked the steward about it, who sent me to talk to this lady about it, who had me talk to the steward about it. I was just following the quest markers, but I think I blamed the wrong guy for whatever was going on. There is more to that quest, by the way, but now I can decorate the home. I bought all of the decorations and went to go check it out. Yeah, it looks a lot nicer in here now, all tidy, and are those mannequins alive? <laughs> <laughs> that is creepy. Yeah, they are all alive until I interact with them and then they freeze doing some kind of Hulk Hogan pose. Place does look really nice now, but I don't think I will ever be back after that. This place is haunted. Now for the most expensive house in the base game. It's in solitude and honestly, I can't remember what the house even looks like. I think I bought this house the least out of all of the original houses in the game. I went over to the Blue Palace because I read I have to finish a few quests before I can buy property here in solitude. And it turns out I already had the quest. Have to go clear out a cave. Uh, I made my way over to find the entrance guarded by 412 bones. That's two skeletons for those of you that suck at math. Oh, look at this place. People here are trying to summon a wolf queen or something. Oh, I got you a wolf right here. Oh, oh, or not. I, I <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I'm back. I got a level up and took the last skull crusher perk. Then went and ruined their attempts at summoning that thing and got some loot. Returned to the blue palace in solitude and now the Jarl wants help leaving a horn at a shrine of Talos for her husband that died. I kind of want to keep the horn for my collection. 
We'll see how this goes. I thought I was heading to a Talos shrine, but I had the wrong quest tracked. I'm mad now, so we're gonna do this one anyway. I think this was from someone in the Blue Palace as well, so we can get a little extra coin doing it. Now that that's done, I'm trying to head to the shrine, but I got attacked by another blood dragon. Finally, we can leave this horn to finish the job and take it right back. That horn is mine now. After turning in the quest, we should be able to buy a house here, and yep, it's super expensive. Decorations also cost a lot, but there is the house. Going in, I don't remember this place at all. It's got three floors to it. Uh, the first floor doesn't have much. There is a basement with lots of useful stuff. Looks like the mannequins aren't alive, always a plus. Finally, there's a bedroom for a family upstairs. It's not my favorite house, but it is in my favorite city, so it's got that going for it. For the price you have to pay, it's definitely not the best house in the game. Especially with Anniversary Edition, add in so many houses that you can get like so easy and they have everything you need. There's a really nice sit-in area outside with a really cool view. Moving on to the next house over in Markov. This is an easy one for us to get because of the Stormcloaks versus Imperial questline being done. We can walk into the Dwarven City and right up to this guy to buy property for 8,000 coin. Oh, and I did get it all decorated too, like always. This one has a really nice view of the city and honestly, going off the vibe of this place alone and not the function, this is my favorite house out of the main game houses. I really like inside of this place. I love how Markov looks in general, to be fair. People here are just weirdos. Didn't think I'd be back here so soon. Solstheim. There is a house you can get in Raven Rock for free. I just have to do a quest. There's trouble here in Raven Rock. This guy is worried the counselor's life is at risk and an attack is imminent. So I asked the innkeeper for info and he had me snooping around in the tomb in town looking for suspicious activity. A woman came in and I'm not sure what's going on now. They have lost me. <laughs> I did get given a key to the house we will eventually get and I went in to investigate. Finding two women inside who attacked me right away. One was the woman from the tomb. Took them both down and got some proof of whatever the heck is going on from this safe. Now this guy wants me to meet with the Red Iron God to finish this rubbish off. I just want my free house, okay? Went to meet them and they had been killed by these assassins. Went in and killed everyone myself and was rewarded with the house. My explaining that quest was bad, I know. My notes for it just say, gimme house. And here it is, our new house. The bodies are still in here. I doubt they're going anywhere kind of brings down the property value. Place is nice, besides that, I like it. Fun house to have for free. Now looking at the list online, that is every single house that came out of the base game purchased. There is another one listed on here for the creation club we're gonna go check out in Riften. It's kinda awkward to get to, we have to go through the ragged flagon where the thieves guild hang out and I can buy it from the barkeeper for 7,500 coin. Now in the rat way there is a door we can open with our new key and here is our new home. Not a good start, my feet are wet already. Oh, okay, it looks nice down here. Not the best house for function or dry feet, but I like it. Found a jeweled ship model in this bookcase. Secret doors too. Oh, this, this is awesome. I take back what I said. Only thing that sucks about it is the wet feet. Plenty of storage in here. Did take a trip back home to drop things off. I don't think I'll be doing any more gear changing in this video, so I think I will make my smithing a legendary skill for further leveling. And same with enchanting too. I got six of the skill trees legendary now and I'm at level 71. Not been this high of a level for a long time. I paid a visit to Whiterun. I had to sell some things and I couldn't help buying out the merchant's iron to make a ton of daggers and enchant them to level smithing and enchanting a little. I didn't do it much, just a quick session. I'm done for now. I'll do it when I hit towns from now on to level up a little between scenes. Anyways, we're gonna be hanging out around Morfall now to get the next house. I'm moving on to the Half-Fire DLC houses that added free plots of land you can build a house at. Uh, we already have the Falkreef plot from the first video. I've been using it to farm potion ingredients. Uh, I don't seem to have the Laid to Rest quest yet. Need to finish that quest to be able to buy the second plot of land we can get here. I got distracted. This guy wanted a fist fight and I'm a sucker for wasting five minutes on these things. I did activate Berserker Rage to do double damage for a minute, but this fight still took way too long. Maybe about five minutes total. Now that was a punch. 
That was about 700 punches, but okay. I'm not marrying you like I did that other lady. I made 200 coin, least efficient way to spend your time getting coin, but I don't regret it. It turns out it's the Yarl we had to talk to. I got the laid to rest quest. He said there was a fire in town and a man's wife and child was inside. The Yarl is suspicious he did it himself after pledging to another woman so quickly after. So I investigated the house and I find the girl's ghost who promises to tell me what really happened if I play hide and seek with her. She poofs and I go find Finder. Find a coffin that speaks and a vampire who attacks me. Put her down quick and it turns out that vampire was supposed to burn the house and kill her and her mother but had a change of heart and tried to turn the kid into a vampire instead. But the vampire was too slow and the fire had killed her regardless. So it wasn't the husband that did it. I returned to the Yarl to report my findings and was met by an angry mob outside who helped me storm the cave of vampires. Found someone's boot collection. I took this pair for myself. It has a unique name. Now returning to tell the Yarl what happened, I can buy a plot of land from this person for 5,000 coin. Before heading to the plot, I bought a ton of lumber from this guy and ran around buying other things to help with the building. And here it is. It doesn't look like much of anything yet. The views are nice. I got right to work building. A cool feature for this house is you can build a hatchery over here in the water behind it. Spend some more time running between towns buying out house building materials. I'd like to eventually fully furnish all of the half fire DLC houses in this save. But for now, I'll just quickly run through and do a bunch of the easy stuff. There we go. That is as done as it's gonna get for now. I really like building these houses. I got the greenhouse done for planted ingredients. It's about half done inside, I'd say. Planted some stuff before leaving. Now we have Lakeview Manor and we have Winstead Manor. The final plot of land that we can get for the Half Fire DLC is the one from Dawnstar and it's pretty straightforward for us to get. We can go and buy it right away from the Jarl for 5,000 coin. I think we normally have to do a quest to kill a giant to get the option to buy it, but since we've done the Civil War questline already, there's a new Jarl here and we can just skip that. I knew I could smell potion ingredients somewhere. I think this is my least favorite of the free plots you can buy. No. No, it's my least favorite for sure. It's got a nice view of the throat of the world over there, but I like the other two best. Got right to work building at least the start of the house. I do love how Wide Run is a short walk from it. Went around buying stuff once again to furnish things. By the next day, I think it's done as much as it's gonna be. I don't wanna waste too much time on it right now. I did get the greenhouse all built and got all of the ingredients growing again. Then I went back to my main house to drop things off before continuing on. That is all free of the half fire buildable house plots purchased. It's a rainy morning over in Wide Run. moving over to the other anniversary edition houses next. I'm familiar with the Tundra homestead you can buy from this guy for 7,500 coin. It's this really pretty house just outside Wide Run. There is a smithing area and stables outside and overall I really like this house. It's got a really nice vibe going on, has a bedroom, alchemy and enchanting area, and a nice display room underground. Rain has stopped so we can have a nice look at it. One of my favorites from the anniversary edition for sure. From one of my favorites to one I've heard is a lot of other people's favorites. Maya Watch is one I've not looked at myself yet, but I'm pretty sure it's easy to get. There it is, over by Morfall. All we have to do is cast a spell here, and there is a little rabbit spirit that will walk over to this thing, and that is it. We can now enter my watch and it's ours. I'm not sure I like how easy it is to get. Like, why would you ever go through all of the trouble of getting some of the other houses? <laughs> I can see why it's a favorite in the Skyrim community for sure. Has a door over here that takes you to a massive gallery where you can craft and display things nicely. Very, very nice house. Do I have the guests for dinner quest? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is the vampire themed house. I'm obviously not a vampire, I'm a puppers. So the quest is probably gonna go differently from how it did in my 100 days as a vampire playthrough. Should be fun, I just gotta climb this mountain and head into this cave where the home is. So if you come here as a vampire, you are coming for dinner. If you come here as anything else, you are the dinner. Took my seat and the letter on the table said the house is mine if I can survive dinner. Vampires started eating people and gargoyle showed up. Whipped out my giant bone and started swinging. Now the house is a mess, but it's mine. 
There is a place for kids, a smithin area, dinner area over here, nice bedroom, and a nice display room. It'll be slightly better when I come back later because of the mess. We'll have even more mannequins for armor too. Next up is Winterhold. We're gonna go here to pick up a journal on the table in the inn that will give me a quest to what I've heard is the biggest home added in the anniversary edition. It's a weird one. I'm on top of a mountain. I gotta go inside this cave where a few bandits have taken refuge. And I gotta say, this place started out rough. There was a lot going on and I really wasn't sure if I was gonna like this home. I had to like repair it. I had this Dwemer spider that I could eventually summon in different parts of the house and it would clean the rooms for me. Only issue was that the objective said to wait. I didn't know if that meant I had to hit T and skip time waiting, or if I could go off and come back after 24 hours to see the results. I waited like this, felt like a waste of my days, but here we are watching the hours fly by. First 24 hours done, and okay, looks like this is the alchemy room. This next room was the kitchen, and the main hall got cleaned up and decorated too. Final time in this room, and there is the smithing room. Room. Got some places to display things. Okay, the more we go on with the place, the more I'm loving it. It's finished now and it's so big I'm getting lost. This place is insane. There is a few load screens to go through to get here. Uh, but they're really quick now anyway in the anniversary edition, so that's not a big deal for me. The issue is finding the way out. <laughs> I'm out. We're off next to Golden Hills Plantation. I feared this one is good for people that like messing with alchemy. I'd say alchemy is my favorite of the free crafting skills for sure. Guessing there is planters there for ingredients. It's not far from my main house, Hendraheim, too. Just have to deal with these giant geckos first. That is the farm over there. You get attacked right out of the gate by a ghost, and going inside, you end up finding another ghost. From what I can tell, there was a small family that lived here and the child went missing. The mother was suspicious that the dad killed the kid and she poisoned the father. And I think he took an ex to her before he died. It turns out the boy was killed by some wolves not far from the farm. I returned the boy's wooden sword to the house and the ghost gave me a key to the place. So now the farm is mine and yeah, there is a lot of room for planting ingredients outside. But the house is a mess. To upgrade it, I believe we're gonna need a steward. Neighbors are friendly. Found a group of Imperials and Stormcloaks fighting. I'm not getting involved, but I'm invested and I want to know who's gonna win. Looks like Stormcloaks win. I know I'm Team Imperial in this playthrough, but I've already done my part. If Imperials are losing now, it's not on me. I was heading to Whiterun. I think I'm gonna have Lydia as my steward for that place. Only issue is, I can't find Lydia in Dragon's Reach. After a quick Google, it looks like she moves to Bree's home once you own that house in town. And yeah, there she is, come with me. Back at the farm, she isn't offering to be my steward. I do have another quest here to plant some ingredients in the plot, so maybe I have to do that first. After a quick run back home to get some ingredients to grow, I started planting stuff. And yeah, after I got 10 ingredients down, I had the quest objective to get a steward for the place. Made Lydia the steward and purchased all of the upgrades I could currently purchase, including these farm hands. Yeah, I bought them. It's not weird at all. They will farm our ingredients for us and put them inside the house that is now fully decorated. There are some other things I have to craft for the place. The ingredients aren't too expensive, so I'm gonna quick run around and grab that stuff. I went to all three of my half-fire plots of land I'd bought because I remember I left some building materials at all of them for the future. So we can use those for the new house. Worked through the night trying to get the things together to make everything for the farm. Bought all of the animals we can have at this place too. And that is everything. This place is amazing. We got the windmill going, lots of room for crops. We got bees giving us honey, animals to milk and get eggs from, and even a new house for the farmhands to sleep at. Now, every so often, we will get all of that stuff dropped off at this box. Already got some stuff coming in. This might be my new favorite home. There's not many left to get. This next home is pirate themed. I didn't make many notes for it, and I can't remember much about what's going on here. I did get a unique sword from one of these people here, guarding a boat I had to take. Ended up in this cave with a ship. This ship can eventually be a home we own. Just have to take out all of the skeletons. I got some more unique armor and weapons. These ghosts were dropping loads of pirate themed armor I took from my collection. Now that we have cleared out the place and left, we just have to wait for some mail that says we own this place. Well, that was quick. I was walking to what I believe is the final home to get, and the mailman turned up when I was passing one of my half-fire houses. Me and my bone went back to check it out. It was no 
different, really. Still got the ghostly remains on the floor. It's a really impressive looking home, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be using it too terribly often. All right, I think this is the last place. It's near Gallows Rock. Again, this is another one I don't really know what's going on with. Something I was really excited to come here for, though, was two unique helmets. Had to head into Gallows Hall to get attacked by the floating objects in sight. I'll just show you the cool items I got from here from doing the quest. Got this cool staff of worms. This bloodworm helmet. That looks really cool. And finally, this helm of Orin Backlaw. But yeah, this place is now ours after finishing the short quest attached to it. Now, I desperately need to go home to empty my inventory. I got a lot of interest in stuff lately, and I'm debating on using one of these new helmets I just got. This one looks really cool with a dragon bone armor, but it's a light armor piece. This other one is a heavy armor piece and matches my build a little bit better. It has some nice stamina enchants on it, but I'm mostly using it for vanity. Alchemy in this game is my weakness. I made the skill legendary again so I can level it further with all of these potion ingredients I've been getting. We've been doing a lot of property hunting, so for the last few days I want to get back to getting some unique items. If we go to the throat of the world and spam spacebar to get to the top of the mountain, you can find a Minecraft notched pickaxe. It raises the wielder's smithing ability and does five shock damage to enemies. Dragon fights in winter hold are not fun. I've been using dragon rend to force this jerk to land, and it keeps going over to the top of the college of winter hold and then running back to take cheap shots. Yes, I pulled out my fists. Okay, I'm not sure what I was thinking. So I went over to the roof of the college myself and it decided to not be here anymore. <laughs> getting trolled by a dragon. I'm here in Winterhold because you can become the Thane of the cities in the game. It's a fancy title, but I mostly want the item that comes with being a Thane. I have the Blade of Winterhold now. I didn't know I'd done enough to be the Thane in Winterhold yet, but that was a nice and easy one. Off to Dawnstar next, and this one isn't so straightforward. See, to become a Thane, we have to help a few people around town, and I'd not spent much time in Dawnstar up until now, so we're gonna have to do some work. I just spent the day doing some deeds for the people around town. Continue on into day 98, did enough to become Thane, and got the Blade of the Pale. It's just an elven sword with a fancy name. I'm going anti-clockwise around the map, so Morfall is next. Just have to help one more person here to get the Thane title. Had to deliver a ladder to Whiterun and go back to Morfall to claim my Thane title and get my fancy dwarven sword. I might have some of these blades already. I know I have the one for Whiterun, for example. I also forgot about my orc friend. I sent him home a while back when I made Lydia my steward for that farm and forgot to go back and get him. So what are we gonna do for day 100? Well, first things first, I need to empty out my stuff for the last time. And I kind of want to appreciate everything I've done in the last 100 days. Got the last few masks from the Dragonborn DLC to finish our mask collection. Got a load of the unique weapons and items from Solstheim too. We also own every single house available in the game. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, let me know if I missed one. Added to my ever-growing scroll collection, I've kept every one I found. Same with books, so many books and a lot of precious gems. Got our hands on so many other random bits in this safe. The safe is starting to scare me with how much crap is in here. I even started robbing people, something I'm very proud of, I know. Kept all of the pickpocketed items. I had a lot of fun making this video, let me know if you want a part free. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.